करनी है अबाउट सप्लीमेंटल एसेज ठीक है सो so, इस पे एक सेशन मैं ले चुका हूँ स्कूल में और आज जो है उस उसी को कंटिन्यू करना है असल में ठीक है तो आ, अच्छा अब आपकी जो एप्लीकेशन सबमिशन होती है इन कॉमन ऐप तो कॉमन ऐप के अंदर ये नहीं होगा कि अगर मैंने फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल आपका डॉक्यूमेंट्स भेज दिए या आ, आपके क्या कहना चाहिए रिकमेंडेशन भेज दी या आपकी फी वेवर का भेज दिया तो आपकी एप्लीकेशन ऑटोमेटिक नहीं है इट इज़ नॉट एन ऑटोमेटिक एप्लीकेशन यू हैव टू गो इंडिविजुअली टू द यूनिवर्सिटीज दैट यू चोजन एंड यू हैव टू सी देयर इंडिविजुअल रिक्वायरमेंट्स दे माइट से प्लीज रीसबमिट द डॉक्यूमेंट्स दे माइट से प्लीज रीसबमिट द पर्सनल स्टेटमेंट दे आर किंग्स दे कैन डू वट एवर दे वॉन्ट ओके एटी परसेंट ऑफ द टाइम्स द यूनिवर्सिटीज दैट आई मेक यू चूज दे विल गिव यू अ फी वेवर बट देन दे आर दे कैन से वी यू नीड टू गिव द फी सो सो दैट्स वाई वॉट वी डू इज वी वी एडवाइज यू टू टेक अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटीज सो दैट if there are uh, if, if if someone is asking for uh, a fee or there's something you don't understand then you simply drop the university or change the university whatever it is theek hai okay aap mein se kuch log hain jinhone abhi tak ek bhi university ko submit nahi kiya hai and that is a little alarming theek hai do categories hain ek category students ki wo hai jinhone abhi tak ek submission bhi nahi kiya now i don't understand why that is happening because i have been shouting since september in fact since august that you have to submit and you have to submit early okay the earlier you submit the better but chale but the problem is the regular decision deadline is also now just around the corner so you have to sub submit early that's the first thing the second thing is that universities that do not give scholarships uh, or do not give uh, very high scholarships un universities ke andar aapko wo most likely kahenge wo most likely aapko koi additional essays likhne ko nahi kahenge they may even not ask for the basic essay the basic personal statement see the personal statement that you gave on common app that is like the cv that is like the basic cv okay that's like the resume for a good university that is a resume for 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 a uh, for the, we the, we do not have good universities or bad universities we have competitive universities and universities of reach okay they they are not they are not bad like colorado state university is not bad but it was designed to be a university of reach okay so they they will look at your resume and they are going they, they were going to look at your personal statement and they are going to say well this is like an interview done we are taking the student on a scholarship but then they will not give you a full scholarship that's the problem even with a substantial scholarship these universities will remain expensive and out of reach for you even though they have designed uh, themselves as universities of reach are you following so when you are going for the competitive universities yes they are irritating there's no doubt about that they will ask you to write they will ask you to submit your documents on common app they will ask you to submit your personal statement on common app they will ask you then they will ask you questions application questions which do not appear on the common app for that you'll have to go individually to each university click and see what they what they require they will ask you for an ielts they will ask you for sat which they are not asking this year okay many good universities are not asking for sat this year but still you have to give sat okay you have to give ielts because acha there's another confusion that ielts is something which is required in this country and not in that country no ielts is required in every country if your not there if your 
first language is not English in your country and you want to pursue a course, whatever course in English, anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, you have to be wise. Okay, the language of France is French. But if you want to pursue a degree in France in English, you have to be wise. There is no other option. So IELTS is an asset. You should give IELTS, I mean, you should really... Uh, plan for IELTS and you should really plan for the SAT wherever you go. Yeah, Australia, in Australia, SAT is not required. In Canada, maybe uh, SAT is not required. But if, but they will, if you've given the SAT, they will definitely look at the SAT score. And it does leave a good impression. And that's what you are looking for. You want to create a good impression. You want to stand out. You are going from Pakistan. This year, universities are receiving record applications, record applications from around the world. They are in trouble. A lot, lot, lot of Ivy League universities are in trouble. Three big universities are in big trouble. Columbia is in big trouble. MIT is in big trouble. Uh, Harvard is in big trouble because of the political demonstrations related to Gaza. They are all facing uh, the Congress and, and, and in the middle of the exam, the, uh, the head of uh, the president of, the Colum of, of uh, which university? Columbia? No, UPenn. She, uh, she was forced to resign. So they are in a flux. But the thing is that, that, is that uh, instead of people running away, more and more people are applying from all around the world. So how do you stand out? How will you stand out? Your hurdles are uh, your O-level exam. So what do I mean by hurdle? By hurdle I mean if you have given your O-level exam and you've got a good score, you will not be eliminated. But that does not mean you will be admitted. If you've given the A-level and you've got an excellent score in A-level, okay, all, the, all, all the people who are here, you will not be eliminated. You will not be thrown out. But that does not mean that you will be admitted. Okay? That does not mean you will be admitted. Okay? Three. If you have done extra extracurricular activities okay does not mean you will be admitted you will not be you will not be eliminated if you have not given the sat maybe you will be eliminated as i as i said they have given you the exemption this year many have given you the exemption but maybe they, they'll just eliminate you why because they have a lot of applications you don't stand out but if you've got 1600 on 1600 on the SAT, does not mean you are in. People have given six A levels, seven A levels, and they have got rejected from Oxford and they've got rejected from top universities. Okay? If you have given the IELTS, you've got a nine band in it. You will not be eliminated, but that's that doesn't mean you will be admitted. What is the thing that will admit you to a university? The thing that will admit you to the university is the writing that you give them. Your personal essays, answers to the questions they ask you, and the supplemental essays that you give them. I know it is irritating. I know it is tedious. Okay, If you are applying to 20 universities and one university has five supplementals, you have 100 supplemental essays to write. 100 supplementary essays to write. Very irritating. But your life hinges on it. Okay? The higher the, the, the higher the pain, the higher the gain. It is irritating right now. But four years from now, you will be grateful for what for the hard work that you've done. Why? Because they are going to give you these universities, if you pay the actual fee, they are out of reach. No one can even think of paying their fee. Yale University, who can pay their fee? 
But if you can get into Yale University and you can show them that you deserve to study there, your education will be free. They have all the funds in the world. Universities have all the funds in the world. They don't need the, they don't need the money that we give them. Okay, they have all the funds in the world. So please, you have just one, I think the last 10 days remaining before you, you have to submit all the, all these essays and all these applications. So what I'm seeing is that people are applying to those universities which do not require supplementary essays, but they, they do not even give uh, very high scholarships. And those that do require the supplementals, but you are not applying there because you think it's very tedious. Okay, that that is that is a problem that that we are face, facing right now, and you now have to uh, sort of you now have to use this time, the winter break. Okay, today is what today is the nineteenth of December, and uh, uh, your. your your deadline, I think, for most universities is 3rd January or 2nd January. So now you have no time. Okay. Start writing these supplementals. So I, I'll just quickly go over some of these. So I, I actually discussed them last time in, in class. Okay. Now, our first goal today. What is our first goal? Understanding Brown University and its supplemental. Why, why have I placed Brown University first? Because Brown University is... Uh, it has the largest number of supplementals among the student pool that we have. Okay, the students who have applied to universities, many of them have applied to Brown, but now they are, uh, you know, now they are at sea. They, they don't know what to do. Once they see those seven supplemental essays, uh, they just panic and they just leave Brown. Don't leave Brown. Brown is, Brown is the best. To, to me, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best. It's the best because it has an open curriculum. Okay. So, uh, so what's what's an what's an open curriculum? Okay. It lets you choose how you want to pursue your studies. Look, look at the situation that students are facing here. Look at the situation. Some idiot out there decides that you have to do biology, physics, and chemistry. Okay? You have to do. If you can't do physics, biology, and chemistry, you can never become a teacher. But who said? Who said? You can never become you can never become a doctor, sorry. Who made that decision? The 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 subject requirements are so rigid, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculously rigid. I mean, how much of physics do you apply in, uh, how much of physics do you apply in uh, biology, in, in, in medicine? I, do, I don't know how much physics you apply in. Yeah, there, there, is, there is a subject called uh, uh, biophysics. There is a subject. But if you're becoming an MBBS, how much physics do you apply? And if you are doing computer sciences, some person out there has decided that you have to study chemistry. I don't understand the link. I'm not understanding the link. Who, who is making these decisions? It's just a way of throwing people out. Don't come. Don't study. Don't. Yeah. This is one university that just does not... The other universities will give you flexible curricula. But Brown will give you an open curriculum. You can choose your subjects. The subject combination, the 40 subjects, let's say, I'm just giving you, you, you need to do 40 subjects for your bachelor's, you can choose those 40 subjects. But before you go into the system, you have to show them that you are, uh, you deserve to be in that stream. Okay, so... Look, how will you convince them? You will convince them when you do their, uh, when you write good supplementary essays for them. Because, because that's the only way. You will be selected on the basis of what you write and what makes you stand out. 
you will not be selected on the basis of uh, your results. A top university does not select people on the basis of results. It rejects them on the basis of results not achieved. Okay? But in the final analysis, they will choose you on the basis of the person you are. And whether you are a good fit with their university and their educational philosophy. Okay, so let's look at the, the this prompt is common for everybody. They, they have given the same prompt, the same question to everybody. What is the question? Brown's open curriculum allows students to explore broadly while also drive, uh, diving deep into the academic pursuits. So look at the question. They are saying, look, we allow you to choose your subjects to to uh, to explore but at the same time you go deep into the academics there is no compromise on that tell us about any academic interests that excite you and how you might pursue them at brown okay if something doesn't excite you if nothing excites you Trust me, you are a bad actor in the role of a student. Okay, when the students come and they say, I, I ask them, you know, what excites you? I mean, nothing excites me. If nothing excites you, then I'm sorry. What can I do? Okay, that, that, that's a very poor thing. Okay, if, see, you are young. At the age of 18, things should excite you and you should dream about things you should dream about making things better you should not just dream about doing a job go beyond i want to become an it professional go beyond that in god's name because if you say i want to become an it professional how does that make you stand out it will never make you stand out so uh, so let's look at uh Let's look at some of the, some examples of this. And we are not just going to look at the example, we are going to see how, uh, how this question is approached, okay? What are the elements of a good answer to these prompts? Okay, just, just give me a minute. So, if you go to Brown, okay, now please keep in mind that here you have to write an essay, your writing skills matter, but your writing skills matter for a purpose, there's a reason. From the essay, you should come out as a person. I want to know about you. I don't want to know about the movies you watch or the books you read. That is a means to an end. You tell them about the book, but don't give a description of the book, how great the book is. From the book, your personality should emerge. Okay? So, instead of saying, these books are amazing. Okay? You can always say, Books are an integral part of my life. Okay, so so that is how the, the, it, it's a very good idea to talk about books when you are talking about an open curriculum. An open curriculum, which 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 also takes you towards academic achievement. Why? Because books do both. Books do everything. Okay, if you are a reader, you can. Uh, if you are a reader and a good listener. You can more or less handle all, all these things. And please keep in mind all these essays employ basic writing skills. There are no superior writing skills involved. If you know basic essay writing skills, you will do good in, in these essays as long as you focus on the question and your personality comes up. Okay. Tell me something about 
yourself. Okay. I was interested. My parents read to me at least once every day when I was a child in the middle school and my siblings wanted to have fun with their friends instead of this their little sister. They kept me busy with books. So it didn't uh, surprise anyone in my family when I told them that I wanted to become a literature teacher one day. Okay. What you are showing here is that your purpose in life is linked to your basic interest. Okay. The purpose that you've set in your life, there is a causal link with your basic interest. There is, uh, in, in this one small paragraph, I've learned about you and I've also learned about the closeness you have with your family. Your parents were committed to you, therefore they read to you every evening. Okay, they sparked the initial interest and that's how you wanted to, uh, you developed an interest in teaching and you now you want to become a teacher. So just see the number of times the word books because now the theme is going to be the book. Okay, book, 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 book. Don't lose that focus. Okay, my favorite thing about books, my favorite, my, my, it's me, it's about me, it's not about the books, but book, your interest is revolving around that, so just focus on that, is the fact that they allow you to travel to distant lands, it's a very, this is a thing about books that has been repeated many, many, many times, for 1000 years, that's what people have written about books, what does a book do, it allows you to travel, okay, uh, it's mind travel, you don't travel when you are actually traveling, trust me, You, if you are going on a world tour, you're not really traveling, you are going from one place to another, you are absorbing the shocks of uh, changing places, you are getting tired, you are enjoying whatever you are doing. Your mind travel is not happening. Mind travel happens only when you sit down and you absorb what happened when you traveled. And you really don't have to travel physically to travel uh, intellectually, to evolve intellectually. That you do through, through the books. I don't have to be in Julius Caesar's Rome in order to know how Julius Caesar's Rome was. I don't have to be in, uh, uh, on the, uh, I, I don't have to physically witness the building of the pyramids of Egypt to know how the pyramids of Egypt were actually built. I don't have to see people uh, hauling big blocks of limestone to see how the Taj Mahal was built. I can read it and I can, I can, uh, I can see it being built step by step right in front of my eyes. So that's what books do. I remember very clearly the first time I read uh, to imagine how it was to walk along the Dakar streets. Dakar is a place, what is Dakar known for? Dakar is known for, it's a place in Senegal which is in Africa. It's, it's till today it is known for its races, okay, for, the, for its rallies, okay, it's a barren desert. But the book, I never traveled there, but the book gave me an insight into what Dakar was. Okay, so your experience, your engagement, Brown's curriculum, now you link it to Brown's curriculum. Brown's curriculum is uniquely designed to help me explore. My interest, first thing. My objective, link to the interest. Brown's curriculum, how will it help me explore my interest? Step three. Literature and I can choose a concentration like I can I can do this at Brown because of its open color. I'm also curious about education technology. Curious work work that word into your essay. I said if you are not genuinely interested in something, you're not a student. So you have to say I'm curious. I'm intrigued by it. I'm uh, fascinated by it. 
but curious is spot on. It's it's the nail on the head. That's the word that they're looking for. So the open curriculum would allow me to take some classes related to the field so that I can learn more about it. I want to explore it. I want to learn more about it. Learn, learn, work that word into your essay. I believe that Brown's economic program will give me a chance. Brown's economic, because that was the question. That was the question. To give me a chance to explore my interest. Sara apne interest bataya. You told them they are interest. Finally concentrating on the literature. Okay. Now let's go to the second. Brown's open curriculum allows students to, while also diving deeply into their academic pursuit, tell us about any academic interests that excite you and how you might. Okay. Uh, okay. This is this is this is a rather old way of starting, but you can do that. You can you don't give a quotation. Give a uh, cite something. Yeah, citing is quoting, but uh, paraphrase it. He once said that science can amuse and fascinate us all, but it is engineering that changes the world. Okay. Uh, computer sciences are intriguing, but AI will transform the world like never before. Something like that. Okay. Uh, laws of physics, laws of chemistry. Okay, I've been fascinated. Fascinated. I said fascinated. Work, work those words into the essay. Fascinated. Okay, I needed to know. My, my over the years, see that the, again, the format is almost the same. The format to the answer is almost the same. I was fascinated. But the focus now comes on the academic pursuit, physics and chemistry. Okay, and over the years, the interest got more sophisticated. Your journey. I joined robotics club. Okay, I joined robotics club. I joined robotics club. So many people come to me. Oh, I did this. I did that. All right, you joined the, the club. So what? Did you teach in the club or did you learn from the club? Did you follow in the club or did you lead in the club? Did you benefit from the club or the club benefited from you? What? What was the result of it? What's the purpose of all this? Okay, no one talks about that. I was this, I was that. All right, that's, that's not the way it is. You don't stop. There's no full stop after... I just take a look at this. There's no full stop after robotics club. I joined the robotics club. Is there a full stop? No. What happened? Okay. So this is a learning exercise for him. It's not a leading exercise for him. It's not a teaching exercise for him. It's not a physical exercise for him. It's mental growth. It's a mental journey. Okay. Go on further. Go on for the experience. My experiences with robotics have also taught me. Oh, learning. He said here, I learned. Now he's continuing with that. Taught me. It truly really does change the world. If you have appreciated something more by doing something new, that's enough. You're not Einstein. They are not asking you to make a contribution. And also keep in mind, the second answer is linked to the first. It builds on the knowledge that has been given in the first answer. It doesn't contradict. Your personality keeps coming up. Okay? So, and I will get the chance to explore different scientific fields. Okay. Brown's culture fosters a community in which students challenge the ideas of others and have... Uh, uh, um, challenge the ideas of others and have their ideas challenged in return, promoting a deeper and clearer understanding of complex issues confronting society. Now this is about society. Dialogue. Society, dialogue is as present outside the classroom as it is academic spaces. Tell us about a time where you were challenged by a perspective that differed from your own. Okay. Tell us about, it's very exciting to, the world would have been such a boring place had I found myself upon every turn of my head. It would have been the most boring place in the world. I turn around and I, and I see myself. That is why uh, internet chat is so boring. 
Why do you think people have debates? The worst thing that you can do to yourself is chat on the internet, on WhatsApp. You know why? Because you network with people who think just like you. And then you don't want to be around anyone who has a view different from yours. When you actually come across someone who has a different point of view, you think they are from Mars. Because when you are in a chat room or when you are on WhatsApp, you are talking or when you're in a Facebook group, you're talking to people who think exactly like you and have similar values. So before long, you forget that there are people in the world with very different values from yours. And they deserve a hearing too. Okay, so the, the, the ultimate bigotry today is people don't like to be around people who are different from them. Okay, I'm a very broad-minded person. I just don't like being people who are different. Being around people who are different. So when was the last time your views were challenged? Okay, so again, here you, you are starting with a small story because they are asking you for a story. In the previous questions, they didn't ask you for any story. Now they are asking you for a story. So now start with the story. They are basically fried caterpillars. My friend Suzanne said, as she put a spoonful of fried in insects on a plate. Oh my God. Fried insects. Okay, so, the, so people uh, around the world eat various things. Fried insects are, are one of those, so no problem at all. You're not supposed to eat fried insects, but for those who do, they do. It's a different culture. Okay, so uh, they're fried uh, caterpillars. All the blood had drained from my face, and I was trying my very best not to be rude by, ins by insulting uh, something that was uh, that was different. Uh, but she had been joking and told her that no one actually ate insects. It turns out that I was wrong, but she was not offended by my remark. Instead, she told me that she'd heard many people say that, but that the reality is that in many cultures outside the United States, people eat many different insects. Okay, so uh, I don't know whether you people have read about the siege of Medina. The siege of Medina is one of the longest lasting sieges in the in the world. It lasted three years, but there have been longer sieges. The siege of Medina ended 19, I think it started in 1917, ended in 1920, something like that. So Medina was surrounded from all sides and there was no food there. So for three years, the soldiers who were defending Medina ate insects and survived. Okay, this, this was this uh, last century. 100 years ago. So that evening when I got home, I researched it and found. So, so what is he, what is he saying? He's saying when I heard it, it made my stomach turn. But now he's telling something about himself. He's saying I'm, I got curious. I researched it. That's what you do. That's what you do. When someone is right, when someone says something you don't like, you go and read about it, you go and find out about it, and when you when you discover that you're wrong, you accept you're wrong. The other person is right. There's no harm in that. In Mexico, it is common to use worm salt for a specific food. In Congo, where my friend Suzanne is from, fried caterpillars are a delicacy often enjoyed with rice and vegetable stew. Bugs remain a traditional food in many cultures across Africa, Asia, Latin America. Learning this about the little creatures made me think about different ah it did not make you puke it did not make you faint it made you think differently okay your perspective was challenged and and something better came out you started thinking differently okay if i write a six on my hand and i show it to you it will be a nine to you but a six to me we are both right it just depends upon where you are from where you are seeing it. It depends upon your perspective. 
okay so i was please keep in mind you have to be an understanding person okay you have to be an understanding person and understanding means looking at reality from somebody else's eyes so i did not see an insect on a plate i saw food dekha now you don't see an insect you see the other person's food it's the provender it's it's the thing that provides for them eventually i tried some of it and it was pretty delicious okay brahms culture fosters i'm i'm going a little quickly brahms culture fosters a community in which yeah sir sir sawal hai ke isne aap kitna fiction dal sakte hain jaise mai bata ke taur pe ek research wala jo option hai wo ki tarah se dal sakte hain aise azair har ko ya agar kisi ne koi aisa koi event aaya ho lekin usko koi research nahi ki ho How long does it take to do a research on something? These days, it doesn't take much to do research for a 250 word essay. I mean, the level of research that has gone into this is very superficial. There's, there's, there's no deep research. They just want, they just want to see the kind of person you are. Huh. नहीं नहीं देर नो देर नो वन इज गोइंग टू कैच यू बट इफ योर पर्सपेक्टिव कम्स आउट प्रॉपरली इट्स फाइन इफ योर पर्सनैलिटी कम्स आउट प्रॉपरली इट्स फाइन यू आर चैलेंज बाय अ पर्सपेक्टिव आई थिंक दिस वी हैव डन ओके नाउ इट्स अबाउट एक्टिव इंगेजमेंट ओके ट्रांस कल्चर फॉस्टर्स अ कम्युनिटी इन विच स्टूडेंट्स चैलेंज द आइडियाज ऑफ अदर्स एंड हैव द आइडियाज चैलेंज इन आई थिंक दिस इज डन Okay, brown students care deeply about their work and uh, and and the, and the world around them. Students find contentment, satisfaction, and meaning in daily interactions and major discoveries, whether big or small, mundane or spe- spectacular. Tell us about something that brings you joy. What brings you joy? you may find it uh, difficult to relate to but throughout universities internationally and especially in so- sociology classes they are spending a lot of time and money trying to discover the meaning of two things what is success and what is joy and is there any correlation between success and joy we can establish a correlation between success and joy first and foremost if we discover what they are we don't know what they are okay it's just like success is like it's a word that is thrown about like a clanging teapot but what is it success is like the soul we all know it's there but what is it success is like the mind we know it's there but where is it joy is the same where is it it's like me it's like i but where is the i in me where is it we don't know so first we are trying to discover that okay so they have thrown an intellectual question at you this time what brings you joy and that's why that's why they are making it small mundane spectacular anything whatever brings you joy okay so what makes you uh, baking a cake baking a cake those are ingredients that i need to create magic uh, trust me cake is magic butter sugar x vanilla flour i first learned how to make them on a sunday afternoon what gives you joy the little things in life okay life is not about big things it's about very small things are you careful with them only when you are careful with the foundation can you be 
creative with the detail. Remember that. Where are those small things that give you joy? Joy is like sugar. You cannot eat it in basketfuls. It's just a little bit of pinch. So what are those little pinches of uh, sugar, of honey, that give you? Honey is not a pinch, but sugar. Okay. I remember making a mess in the kitchen and having a stomachache because I ate too much cookie dough, whatever it is, I don't know, cookie dough, okay. Most of all, I remember that incredible feeling that I had when my siblings and I sat around the kitchen island and took our first bites. Sitting with family and eating, it's the ultimate joy. The most valuable things in life, God gives you without without you doing anything, without a cost. They come at zero cost. Just as oxygen comes at zero cost, water comes at zero cost. Family, sitting with family, what a joy it is. Okay? Uh, baking a cake is nice, but baking it with siblings, that's called a picnic. That's a real picnic. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, the kind of person I I don't understand how people have picnics with friends. I don't. I, I can't understand that. What joy do you get going to a beach party with people you see every day in your office? I don't know. There is no joy in it. The real joy is traveling or working or baking or cooking with family. Family is the ultimate thing. So I enjoy the finished product, of course, but my favorite part is the process of baking. Okay? The main thing is the, the activity, the process. Whatever you are, uh, there's a wedding in the family. What is it that gives you the, the the ultimate rukhsati, that gives you the pleasure or the process of being in uh, arranging the wedding. The process is the main thing. Okay. So uh, there are a lot of things involved. And now, what is it about it that gives you? There is passion. There are numbers. There's precision. There's creativity. Okay. I can spend hours baking because it brings me comfort. Okay, there's a lot of comfort in cooking. For those people who like cooking, they know. There's a lot of comfort in cooking. There's a lot of comfort in reading. There's a lot of comfort in... There is comfort in whatever you are comfortable with. Okay? So, and you finally give a strong word to it. I love the fact that it gives me a chance to share a slice of happiness with people around me. Happiness, if you can share it with others... Keep in mind, happiness, if you can share it with others, you are an ultimate generous person. You are a generous person of the highest order. Because we do not like to share happiness with a lot of people. We like to, sh if, even if we share happiness, we share it with those within our circle. You can share money with others. You can share time with others. You can share expertise with others. You can share uh, exertion with others. Games with others. But happiness, sharing happiness with others means that you are a truly generous person. And the, and, uh, and, and, and the nice thing is that when you share happiness with others, happiness actually grows. Okay. Uh, what happens when a bowler throws a ball and uh, uh, sort of eliminates a batsman? Why do they immediately run up to the other fielders and uh, you know give them high fives? Why? Is it written anywhere? No. It just enhances happiness. 
because because it gives them happiness to destroy others okay mike tyson was interviewed once and and he was asked what gives you happiness he said when i see the other person in pain my god the happiness that it gives me okay my ultimate happiness is inflicting pain on others a cricketer's a bowler's ultimate happiness is eliminating a batsman okay what gives you happiness that will tell me a lot about you as a person that's what we are interested in committing to a future career as a physician while in high school requires careful consideration and self reflection what values and expectations have led you to believe that becoming a doctor in the medical profession this is about a particular profession uh, those who are doing pre med they can read this this is a good answer for that okay so today what i've done is i've tried to cover the questions of brown okay uh, and most questions that you will get in the supplementaries will be like these so your so the so what are the steps the steps is what interests you how that interest has grown over time how the university is going to foster that interest how the curriculum is going to support it and that's how your personality should come up okay if you see these essays are building on on each other and they are making your personality more and more prominent okay any questions now